All right, thank you for stopping in again at Nine World Chronicles. And today I wanted to take a deeper dive into Olokan, uh, pun intended, right? The Orisha of the seas, of water, really. An amazingly powerful deity in the Yoruba belief system. Or really, she's trans transcended that into you know being more of a global phenomenon in a lot of ways. Definitely, definitely has a, a, a lot of weight and you know, South America and all of the other belief systems that come from your beliefs. And they are many. And she is a deity who has complete rulership over waters. She's not simply a uh, Orisha of water. She is the source of all the waters on the earth. And in her role, she serves to provide good health, of course, prosperity and fertility. And it is believed that even the children of her uh, will not suffer barrenness or dryness. But based on her duality of being able to uh, confer fertility, she is seen at times as a male and a female energy. Although most of the time she's depicted in the form of the female that we see, the female form that we see. And she is very, very powerful and she has flexed her muscle, so to speak, in a variety of ways. And in some tellings, her anger caused changes in, in, in the bodies of water all around the world. And at one point, she became angered or came into a dispute with Obatala over land, and they could not restrain her. And she in, impeded upon the land and caused great devastation. And it literally took assistance from Ogun, who crafted special chains made out of uh, iron that were strong enough to restrain the sea or to restrain the power of this goddess. So it took enchanted works in order to calm her rage. But eventually they were able to sit down and work out an agreement, you know, dividing up what parts would be her land, or what parts would be land and what parts would be under the ownership of the sea. And it is said that she created the uh, Atlantic Ocean based on one of the uh, outpourings of her anger or rage. But a deity who's also known, again, for providing fertility as well as wealth. So overall seeing for her benevolence and her kindness towards particularly mankind. Here is a poem that, or a prayer that was issued for her, and it says, She is the owner of the waters and prosperity, the queen of the realms of water, the great waters that cover the earth, a wonderful ocean that has no end. Whoever seeks wealth, let them go to the house of Olakun, who has abundant wealth, mother of uncountable wealth, water without end the one we greet when we wake the one whom we cherish one who knows the source of olukan prosperity calls unto all the waters let the waters bow to olukan crown olukan as the queen of the waters amazing veneration and again to the importance of her, of her she is obviously associated with life-giving water very important obviously for mankind but she's also seen as the mother of all other water-based Orishas, making her the mother of Yemoja, Oya, Osun, and Ajay, and any other minor water elements are also seen as simply being uh, of her seed, coming from her, she being the primary mother. Also prevalent in Santeria, Condolombe, and other Yoruba-oriented religions. She is recognized as being the most powerful of the Orishas, like Oludumari, where she is not prayed directly to. But through her Orishas, the prayers would come to her and she would bestow those blessings. Again, I just wanted to talk a little bit about this amazing Orisha, an amazing deity who is known worldwide for her power. If you have more to add to this piece, please do so in the comment section. As always, I ask that you hit that like and subscribe and click the notification bell so you know when new videos are about to drop.